Hi everyone, Michelle Markey with Medina Domestic Arts Studio. And this next series of videos is going to be about background coloring. Um, I have a series of classes that I'm doing in a month and I always prepare a video that is an adjunct to the classes. Um, if you're interested in the classes, I'm teaching at the Best Little Retreat Center in Plano and you can contact them for further information. Anyway, I have already stitched this out. It is on cotton sateen, and it has a tearaway stabilizer behind it. I have taped it down with painter's tape on a foam board that is covered with a piece of stiff plastic. And the reason I use this is so that once I have finished coloring this, any residual color that is left on here can be wiped off with a damp sponge or a little bit of a paper towel and some Dawn liquid detergent. So this is how I would normally prep something that I'm going to be doing a lot of background work in order to hold it in place so that the fabric doesn't become wrinkled or that as I'm coloring, the coloring doesn't become uneven. This first series of techniques is going to basically be dry on dry, meaning the color that we're going to be using to color the background goes on to dry fabric with a dry tool. And in this particular case, it's the Karen Dosh. Let me get a, there we go. The Neo Color Aquarelle Water Soluble Wax Pastel. The reason I'm using this, these are very easy to use. The color goes on very easily, and it really just comes down to this. Now, what I'm looking for with each one of these samples that I'm going to be doing is I want my embroidered block or item highlighted by the background color that I'm going to use. And since it's a Christmas theme, I want warm happy, actually I'm going to go for kind of a golden glow. And the best way to do that is your item should have what appears to be like a light all around it. That will actually set it off no matter what color you're going to use here. If you'll start out with a very pale color around this, and then as you move out, the color becomes deeper. So let's just do a, a quick, just on one side, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is the pale yellow, and I'm just laying down a bit of color all along, just this edge. Now, I'm not getting it all the way to the edge. When we apply our fabric medium later, we can do that. But as you can see, I'm just carrying the color out I'm gonna go about a bit, an inch out, okay? Now, normally I would do the whole entire ornament, but we're doing this for demonstration purposes, so I'm just going to do this one side. Now, I'm going to move on to a deeper color. This in particular happens to be the Sierra Yellow, or Sahara Yellow, and I'm gonna first start overlapping where I finished my first coloring. And you wanna do this so that the two colors will blend easy when you go and apply the fabric medium. So I'm just coming out slowly but surely. And as you do this, you don't have to get complete coverage, um, but, but a, a, a nice layer to start out with is good. You can always come back later on and deepen it. But I hesitate doing that at first because you don't wanna start out dark and then try to have to lighten it later. Okay, the next color that I'm going to add is called an orange yellow. And again, overlap the colors slightly. Now you can see that I'm really kind of expanding almost all the way to the corner. And I'm trying to do this quickly, so, because by the way, I know watching someone color is not exactly thrilling video but I do wanna get the point across on how to do this. Okay, so now what you can see is that we're moving from light to dark, and the last color that I'm gonna use here is called a golden yellow. And I'll just carry that out all the way to the corner. 
Now looking at this, to be frank with you, I actually think um, I need to overlay a little bit of a darker color because it almost looks like this color is darker than this. Now, sometimes when you put the fabric medium on, that can actually change. But since I want to be guaranteed that the color is darker, um, I do want to grab a hold of another color. Now, I've got some colored pencils here, and you can do this with colored pencils. So that's actually one of the reasons why I want to show that it, you don't have to necessarily use the crayons. You can actually come in here with watercolor pencil, and it's all kind of one and the same, and just lay some overlay of a darker color. In this particular case, this is called, oh, it, it's a Cezanne, but it doesn't have, it just has a number. But it is certainly, as you can see, kind of more of a dark tan or baked earth. If this was a ink tense pencil, it would definitely be baked earth. Okay. So I've definitely put more of that darker color down, and you can see that it's def you know, got a, a definite stronger, deeper tone than the rest of this. So as you can see, it's going from light all the way to dark. Okay, we're going to pretend again that we have put the color all the way around, and now we're going to apply the fabric medium. When you do this, you should always work from the light to the dark because you want these colors blended, but what you don't want to lose is the shadow effect of going from light to dark. If I were to say start in this corner and work this way, um, this would just become kind of basically one solid color and you really wouldn't get the distinction between the various different shades as it moves to a darker end. So what I've done is I've already put um, fabric medium in three of these pots. Now I'm using a makeup brush and the reason I'm using this is because it's got a lot of coverage and all I'm gonna do is dip the brush down. I'm not gonna soak it, I'm just going to get the tip wet. And then I'm just gonna come over here and start spreading that on. And again, try to work. I, and I don't really care that it's not right smack dab on the line. Um, I don't think that matters in this particular case. Now, if you were gonna start out for whatever reason, with a really dark color, yeah, you'd probably wanna get it right up to this line. But given that the color that I'm trying to achieve is a, a glow effect, I don't think it's necessary. Now notice I'm working out, right? So this I'm dragging and that's a little bit of a hair. I have, I have animals and they're shedding right now. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep pulling this away. Now when you start realizing that it's not you know, getting coverage, then again, dip your brush in, start where you left off, and just start working the color back and forth. Again, I'm not going back into the very light, but I'm kind of working where the two colors actually merge. And I'm working it until I no longer see any streaks. As you can see, there's streaks right here, right, where I colored. What you wanna do is work the bristles back and forth with the fabric medium so that those streaks go away. And let me dip it in one more time and come down here and finish. And um, try to keep your fabric from bunching up like that. Um, you, you'll, you'll end up spreading the color um, poorly if that happens. And if you need to, you may wanna actually go ahead and put some additional tape down just to hold it down. And once again, more hairs, sorry about that. But as you can see, it's got a nice light glow going from the very light to the darker gold. And that's all you have to do. Um, this is probably the easiest technique that's out there. And it's also easy because we're only using basically one color and just a variety of tones of that color. So stay tuned. The next video will be about using um, a wet on wet and where we will actually mix up the colors used.